Welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. We've got some great ways for you to finish borders on your quilt today. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more great quilting ideas. I'm Kim Sandberg and this is Christina Whitney. We're both uh, educators here at Handy Quilter and we are going to talk, show you today, not just talk about today, but we're going to show you some great ideas on how to finish borders, yes. especially um, essentially shortcuts to do to math, right? Yes, because we yes. don't like to do math. No, neither one of us do. So these, the, the quilt we're working on today is a panel that was very kindly provided to us by Bonnie Browning of AQS, that's the American Quilting Society. Um, about a year and a half ago, she did a, a some online classes on how to add borders to panels. Um, Christina and I recently uh, bumped into her at a show and she kindly gave us a couple of quilts to do some filming with. So yep. we just wanna say thanks to her. It's really, uh, it's really fun to see the way that she did this. So this quilt has, uh, actually has four borders. It has with... four borders, three of which have cornerstones. Exactly. So it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun quilt to look at. The panel's really fun, the borders are fun, the colors are fun, but it's always the great question how do you quilt it right yes and it's really tricky mm -hmm. do i do each border separately mm -hmm. do i combine borders yeah. do i just do one big huge squiggle over the whole thing no yeah. not usually edge advised edge. <laughs> um edge to edge is always an option absolutely. too absolutely absolutely yeah. yep so i grabbed some preview paper mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. put it over top of this and doodled some different designs yeah, we're going to scoot the machine down here on this other end Right. so that we can see what we've got here. So Christina's got some designs set up here. So we're gonna do some different Put. techniques here. Yep. So we're gonna do one border where we're doing the border by itself mm -hmm. and a different design as the cornerstone. So you can see that Christina's got this all drawn out. So there's the cornerstone with that different, and then there's a design here through the border. That's the outside border. Yep. And then this yellow border, mm -hmm. I am trying to treat it as a continuous with the corner stone being included in that design. Okay, okay. And of course, I'm, I'm guessing your goal on all of these is to not have to break your thread. Always. No matter what you're doing, right? <laughs> Isn't that always the challenge? So you can see how we've got the loops and then it just comes into another loop there in the corner stone. That looks mm -hmm. really great. Okay, and then, then these inside borders, what are you doing here? This inside, I'm actually treating two borders Ooh, as one. I like that. So we're gonna show how to do that. Okay. And it's gonna be a similar concept as this yellow border where I'm gonna continue the design with the corner there. Okay. But these leaves that I'm doing are all kind of directional. Okay. So I'm gonna need to find my center point and do them directional so that when I get oh. to this end down here, yeah. I'll be able to slant way. it going the correct direction. Okay. Now, um, so I've got a question for you right off the bat. What color thread are you going to use on this quilt? Because well, we've got a lot of different colors going on here, which is fine. But we're going to use the Mono Poly from okay. Superior Threads. Yeah. So it's a clear thread that will blend with all of the colors. I love that. And then what's the next question? Whenever we use monopoly thread. What kind of a, what color of bobbin do we use? So we're gonna use a bobbin that's matching the back fabric. Um, we might loosen our top tension just a little bit mm -hmm. so it sandwiches closer to the bottom mm -hmm. so that that red doesn't come up to the top. That sounds so. good. And that is, I believe that's how it's tensioned. At least I said the tension. We'll, we'll, hopefully we don't have any <laughs> little pokies coming up we'll here. We'll see but. how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next question is, how do I fit my design mm -hmm. in the space? Yeah. Evenly spaced. Yeah, without having to do math. Without having to do math. Okay, there will be a little bit of math, sort of, uh, maybe, kind I of. I know, I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna set that down there. Okay. For this first design, I wanna use a ruler. Okay. It's our multi-clamshell, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna use the four inch. Okay. So, and that's on this outside border here. We're using yes. that four inch clamshell. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of drawing on here. I want to okay. first of all find my center point here. Okay. And I've got a 
long arm centering tape. So you'll notice it starts at zero mm -hmm. and works out. Uh -huh. And it also has these little doohickeys on there. Yeah, the little markers. That slide. Yeah. So we're gonna use those sliders. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure my quilt. So I'm at 17 and 16 and a half. So we're gonna go 16 and three quarters. Okay. 16 and three quarters. Is that good? Yeah, it looks good. I can hold down this side for you. Okay, so I'm gonna mark my center here. Okay. And I'm using a, a handy pencil, yeah. handy oh. iron off pencil. Love that pencil. And then I wanna use four inch increments. Okay. But if I do that, I'm gonna end up an inch too short on either side. Right. So I wanna stretch those out just a little bit to okay. make them fit. Okay. So what I did is I came over to my four and then I moved over four and an eighth. So my marker is on oh, four and an eighth. Okay. Then the next one, I'm gonna add another four, so four and an eighth plus another eighth. So I'm gonna scoot that over to four and a quarter. Okay. And then the and next then one. And then gonna go over to 12 and a quarter plus another eighth, so 12 and three eighths. Okay. And then 16 and a half, is that right? Well, yeah, and this so, one should line up with the edge. Yeah. Is that right? So I am still just a tiny bit short, so I can just wiggle those just a tiny, okay. tiny bit. Just moving yeah. over just a little bit. And the goal of this is just to get some even spacing. Right, right. Okay, once I have that even spacing, I'm gonna take my handy pencil again, and I'm gonna mark mm -hmm. those lines. Okay. I'm just making a mark on the quilt really for reference, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. And then that seam will be the, the, the other side. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Did you already yep, I, move I all of moved those? Yep, I just them just that little eighth of an inch or so to make everything end up where it should, hopefully. I guess we'll see whose side ends up even. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna take the tape measure away. Okay. I've got all my reference points. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna bring my machine over. I'm doing ruler work, so I've got my sure foot on, I've got my ruler base on. Mm -hmm. And I want to do this clamshell from here to here. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my machine into position. And I'm not even gonna worry about the cornerstone yet. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do the cornerstone first. Why not? Because you're doing a different design in that cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Now, do we need to pull out this um, basting that's in here? This, this quilt is basted. I went through and basted oh. it for you. I'll just <laughs> that monopoly, I didn't even I see know, it. I know, here, we'll swap sides okay. and I'll just, I'll just pull out the basting as we go across here. Very easy to do. Okay, so while you're undoing the basting on that side, I'm gonna work on this. Okay. Um, can you pull the bobbin up with you on that yes. next section just yes. to get it out of this yep. square here? Yep. Perfect, okay. So I'm gonna focus on this cornerstone here. Mm -hmm. This is on the very edge of the quilt. Mm -hmm. So I want to give myself about, you know, a half inch or so wiggle room yeah. for this design to make sure that I don't cover it up with my binding. Right, right. So, I always want to be mindful of that around the edges, right? Yes. Um, so I'm just checking my settings here real quick. I'm doing 12 stitches per inch. I'm on cruise mode with the needle in the down position. And my gears are turned off on my oh, Pro Stitcher. Very important. That's always very important. <laughs> and I'm gonna just do a continuous curve through here and I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay. And notice with that continuous curve, I am already back to where I was wanting to start oh, my isn't border. That nice. I'm starting to end in the same position. You yes. Move on. That's great. Okay, so my needle's in position. I'm going to put my ruler up in here using the center or this um, line along the center of the ruler mm -hmm. on my seam line. Okay. Now you'll notice the line that I drew here mm -hmm. is more than a quarter of an inch away. It is. So we're going to do a little bit of wiggling. Okay. Wiggle it just. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna edit that out. <laughs> I bet Kayla doesn't, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to wiggle just a little bit. Um, what I like to do is come to about halfway, mm -hmm. and I kind of pause, do a couple stitches along the top yeah. as I'm shifting the ruler just oh, slightly and then yeah. continue on. I like that. So this is this is essentially the equivalent of easing in a little extra fullness, exactly. but in the stitching. Exactly. Yep. 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 
So it's a way that I can use the ruler, get that nice, accurate stitch, but at the same time, make it fit the space mm -hmm. I need. Yep. Okay, so I just came in right there on my marked line. Perfect. I'm gonna shift the ruler over, do the same thing, just shifting it a little bit as I get to the top. A little bit of shifting here at the top, making sure that the edge of the ruler is a quarter of an inch from where I'm aiming for. And I'm gonna continue all the way around. Yeah, I turned it off. Now, is anybody gonna be able to tell that I moved that ruler? Nope. Especially with the monofilament thread? Absolutely <laughs> not. The best part about it. For sure. You know, it's. I think it's such a good thing to know, though, that that if you're, if you've got a ruler, especially for like a circle, and it's not, or an arc in this case, um, it's not exactly the exactly exactly the right size. You can always make it fit by just adding mm -hmm. in a little bit extra there. Yep. And sometimes you might want to take your handy grip off if you're using handy grip. Mm, yeah. Now, if you have handy grip on the back and you don't want to peel it off, you can always just put a little piece of painter's tape over the top of it, and then the, the ruler will, will slide just fine. Mm -hmm. That's another way that you can or work with that. If you don't need the etch lines, you can just turn it upside down. That works too, yep. exactly. Okay, so I am here over to my next cornerstone, okay. and I'm gonna take my clamps off just for a second because I'm hitting my ruler base. Uh, sorry, this uh, backing wasn't quite as wide as I should have cut it for ruler work. Okay, so I'm wanting to get up to here to do this top part. Okay. So I'm gonna have to either break my thread, travel, or try to retrace what I've done. So I'm gonna just do my cornerstone real quick. Yeah. Again, I'm not going all the way to the very edge because I need to leave my binding space. So that's where I'm aiming for. So I am, again, using that monopoly thread. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna travel up in the seam. Okay. And I, I went through beforehand to stabilize this quilt. I stitched in the ditch in all these places. So Christina's just stitching over that same place again, which a ditch is a great place. You can, you mm -hmm. can stitch over that a few times and you won't even notice it at all. Yeah. So I'm gonna do this same arcing shape coming back the other way. But instead of lining up my etch line on the edge of the quilt, I wanna give myself about half an inch in, so I leave room for the binding. Right. Um, you can trim it, square it up, and not yeah. worry about losing any of that shape. Okay, so I'm lining up my third line, and I'm again aiming for that spot down there. So I'm gonna start stitching. Shifting the ruler just a little bit. And I'm gonna continue coming across. You're just repeating that, that same design on the other side. It creates a fun little kind of like interlocking um, design. Mm -hmm. I really like that, it's fun. Yeah. And I know it's kind of hard to see on camera because it is that clear thread, mm -hmm. well, but this is a real quilt that somebody's gonna be using, mm -hmm. so. It's also, when you stitch on fabric that's got a lot of pattern in it, like this one does too, even if we were using, unless we were using a highly contrasting thread, you're not gonna see the stitching as much. One other tip that I'm thinking about right now mm -hmm. is um, if you're gonna be doing something like this, you wanna make sure you leave plenty of backing. Yes. You'll notice that my ruler is going over top of the leader. Mm -hmm. If I had pinned to my leader, right. those pins would be causing me grief. Yes. Um, we actually based it onto this leader, so it's not an issue. Yeah. But that's something to be aware of as you're preparing your quilt. That's a really good tip, Christina. Okay, three more? I think we're I almost think so. there. Just a few more, yeah. It looks so good, though. creates those little diamonds. Would you guess that um, it wasn't the right measurement? No, no, you'd never in a million years look at that and go, oh wow, she did 
did a little stretching there to make yeah. those fit. This just fits in beautifully. Okay. Come up to that corner there. And do a little tie off. Yeah. And you would do the same thing on your mm -hmm. sides and on your um, bottom. All the way through. Well, that's, I think that's such a great uh, skill to show there too, how to just stretch those rulers a little bit and make your designs fit in the space allotted. Okay, so Very that good. was our tip with this centering tape with mm -hmm. the, the little sliders on it. For this next one, mm -hmm. we want to do these little loops here. Okay, so I'm this, gonna slide this back over here. This, this is a fun one. So I've got a piece, uh, or a piece, a roll, a roll of old-fashioned adding tape. This, this, this is really truly for an old-fashioned like adding machine. And I say old-fashioned, meaning from like the 80s and 90s before everybody had a calculator or um, on their phone or spreadsheets. I mean, everybody uses spreadsheets now, right? Yep. This, if, if you can't find adding machine tape, which I don't know if they even sell it, make it anymore. They do have cash roll, uh, cash register rolls, which mm -hmm. is exactly the same thing. So we're just gonna take this, I'm gonna get this piece started here. I think I heard of somebody using toilet paper even. Oh, I believe it. Anything any, <laughs> anything that's on a nice long roll would, would absolutely work. Okay, so I'm gonna get this started here. So this is the no math way of doing this. I'm gonna take my roll here. I'm gonna lay it out inside the border that I have there. Do you need scissors? Um, nope, I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna show you. So I'm just gonna take my fingernail and put, make a little um, score mark, essentially a little fold. And then I will fold it and just take and make that nice and flat. And then I'll just very carefully tear right along that line, okay. which, is, which is good enough. Okay, there we go. And, and you did other... it just on the inside. You didn't include the cornerstone, correct? Nope, I'm just, I'm just doing the, the size of the border. Now I'm gonna even up this other one here. I'm actually just gonna fold that in so that it's nice and flat. Now, this is where the really um, complicated part comes. Are you ready for this? Fold it in half. I know. How do you find the center? How do you find the center? <laughs> then you fold it in half again. How many sections do you want me to divide this into, Christina? I don't know, you can pick. Okay, I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna fold it in half again. If it helps on this preview paper, that can kind of give you a gauge of how. Okay. Oh, hey, look at that right there. Okay, so I have this folded down into this nice little piece here. And that last fold, because I'm going through a lot, I'm just gonna do it again. And then when I unfold it, you will see that I have nice, evenly spaced folds all the way across that paper. It means that I can now lay this here and it goes from the edge to the edge. And look at that, it's perfect. It shows me where those increments are all the way across. And then we can go ahead and mark them. So what, what marking tool are we using this time? This is a little bit of a lighter fabric. So the, uh, the um, this is iron a, off pencil might not work quite yeah. as well. So this is a water or um, air, erase, air erase. erase. If I'm too impatient to wait for it to air erase, I can always put a little water on mm -hmm. it. Are we gonna be able to see those dots there? I think so, yeah, you can see those. You're just marking every, just where, where each one of those little, oh yeah, sorry, I have to keep a little tension on that side there. This is my full foolproof way of doing it because the the centering tape's awesome and I have one of those, but you still have to do a little math. So <laughs> this is definitely my way of doing it. And the nice thing is too, once, once you've done this for the top border, you can save this and use it again when you get to the bottom. Perfect. It'll be the same yep. increments. Okay. So we're gonna add some little loops in there. Yeah. Let's start with that cornerstone. Okay. And we're gonna do the you're gonna do it out at an Fill angle, right? Fill that one right? in at an angle, okay. yeah. Or did you wanna stitch this one? Oh, I'll let you. This one will be quilted by Christina, how's that? I did, I've done most Basted of the quilting by on Kim. the other one. Basted <laughs> by Kim, quilted by Christina. Where did my thread oh. go? Okay, just taking a couple stitches, locking it in place. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. All right. 
Oh, hit my clamps there. That's okay. Okay. You left the ruler base on, huh? Yep. Yep. Okay, so here's my next mark. I think that's it. Yeah. So I'm gonna pretty much play connect the dots. Okay. So I'm I'm just trying to fill in and then come down and end at that dot that we marked on the mm -hmm. quilt. Perfect. I like that. It just gives you a target to aim for, right? Mm-hmm. Now it's important to remember when you're quilting towards a target, you want to be looking ahead to the next one. By the time you're quilting to a specific one, you need to be already looking ahead to where the next one is. Are they air erasing? Yeah, there you go. That's where it is. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can't even see my marks anymore. So you see, Christina's just setting her, she's putting her finger right by where the mark is just to help her know that's the spot she's aiming for. We're just doing the classic L as we like to put it. So now into my cornerstone, and I'm going to do that so one good. on the angle. Okay. Then you'd be ready to go ahead and head down. Yep. And if I'd marked this ahead of time, mm -hmm. I could have done those in my throat space and filled that all up at one time. Exactly. So. Yep. Well, that's a great trick. One of my favorites. <laughs> but we've got one more way to show you how to easily space things within the border. So let's take a look at this last border here. Okay. So, so this last border this we're going to... Up there. Again, we've got to find our center mm -hmm. and then we're going to work our way out. Okay. And... So what's, what's, your tri what's your tip for this one, Christina? We're going to use an elastic. Just okay. your basic run-of-the-mill elastic. Waistline elastic. Yep. And what I did was I took this elastic and I made marks on her. In mm -hmm. Same spacing. Okay. The spacing doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever spacing you want. Um, but then what I want to do is, this is about how far I'm wanting to do Apart. my things. But let's find our center first. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So seven. Uh-huh. Okay, where's my seven? Sorry, can I you can hold, hold that elastic? Yeah, I can hold that there One, for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I am going to let's move the plastic. Pull the plastic and then pull out the preview paper. And so I'm going to mark down something. here so I can see better because okay. it kind of just blended in with that yellow. It does. Okay, so I need to have from here to here. Those are going to be my start and end points. Okay. And I need a center here. Remember, we're combining here. these two borders. Yep. So if I hold this here, mm -hmm. I'm going to have you hold the center for me. Okay. So we're going to hold it on the center, and then I'm going to stretch it a little bit mm -hmm. so that my mark Ooh. is on the corner right there. That's so great. And I'm going to make a mark there. A little flexibility here. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll hold the center. I'll pull that on this side. And you can go ahead. You know, that's really nice too. Like if you know that, say that I only wanted to do three of these on each side, I can easily just stretch this elastic farther mm -hmm. and then it evenly divides the space. What a great yeah. way to do that. So yeah, if I didn't want to do, do that spacing, I could stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, and it's gonna keep that even spacing. That is such a good tip, I love that. And I love that you have a nice long piece of elastic there too. So whatever size of quilt you happen to be working on, mm -hmm. you can make it fit on your nice big frames. Oh. I was like, I lost my plastic. I forgot what I'm the doing. The plastic's right here. Would you like to okay. see the design that you're quilting? Um, this is the one where you're doing the leaves that are leaning. Yes. So away this is from the center. Going to be a little bit more 
Mm -hmm. Confusing because we're going to have to just figure out which way here. we're going. So let's actually mark. This was my center here. I'm mm -hmm. going to give that one a big mark there. Okay. So I remember to change directions. And you're going to help me remember. I am. Okay. I am. Absolutely. So my goal here is just to kind of mimic the shape of the leaves. Oh. on the panel themselves. I like that. I like so that. I, I can do little curved ones. Uh -huh. I can do ones that have more of a point with a spine. Mm -hmm. I think I might play with that one a little bit. Yeah, that's the one you have drawn is with a spine. Well, at least with a spine in the center. So, okay. So again, I'm using the red and the blue. Okay. And filling in the corner first. Okay, here we go. And then I'll show you my connector too, because I didn't talk okay. about that. Okay. So doing that point, make a little spine. I like it. Okay. So I need to travel from this point to my next mark. Mm -hmm. I could just stitch in the ditch if I wanted to, mm -hmm. or I think I'm going to do just a little bit of an arc here like to that. bring in the arc from the previous mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. Also put a nice little arc in that outside border too, mm -hmm. all the way around. That looks really good. So adding my leaning leaf okay. and arc to the next section. Add a leaf. And arc over. And I'm watching for when you get to the center to remind you to switch directions. And each leaf is unique, just like it is in nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, your next one's your center. Okay. So how are you going to do your center? So I'm going to jump over here, and I'm going to do a leaning leaf this way. Okay. And then I'm going to do a leaning leaf the other way. Okay. So that very much lets you know, hey, this is the center. Yep. And then hop over. And now I'm leaning my leaves the other direction. Oh, that looks really good. And if I really wanted to get picky, I could have taken my marking and drawn like 45 degree angles yeah. to kind of keep the, the leaves balanced more. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think this looks good. It looks more like, you know, none of the leaves in the panel are exactly the same. So I think it's following the theme of what we've got going in the quilt. Here, I can do my leaf all the way up into the corner. Then and then I'd be ready going across. Yep, to go down the oh. side. They're such good tips, Christina. You know, borders are, I, I feel like sometimes they're, they're kind of the, the block that you run into when you're designing a quilt, right? Yeah. And having some some really great ways to make designs fit in there easily without doing any math. And also just, just some ideas too of uh, filling them, not being afraid to combine a couple of borders either, mm -hmm. if, especially if you have a quilt that's got a lot of borders. For example, yeah. like the quilt that's behind us that's actually a medallion quilt. Um, this it's just all borders. Yep. How do you decide what you're going to quilt? So don't be afraid to combine those. Just have fun with them. Yeah, you, you can combine them. You can break them up. Mm -hmm. You can um, kind of take the, the fabric as your cue yeah. for the design, but also for how involved you want it to be. If it's a busy fabric like these, mm -hmm. just keep it a simple border because yeah. you're not going to see very much of it. Mm -mm. No, so. you won't. You won't. Well, I think these are some really great tips. Hopefully these are helpful to all of you. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe for more great ideas for finishing your quilts and have fun quilting.